Hello wonderful person and welcome to the sun. Today we're going to be briefly talking about a mission to the sun that's going to be launched in July, August of 2018 and it's a mission that is going to study uh, this beautiful creation, this beautiful object that is so mysterious but so important to life on earth. Anyway, let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So the so-called Parker Solar Probe is going to be launched by NASA uh, and specifically it's actually next year for me but for you maybe it's already been launched and this is the mission that's going to try to unlock various mysteries of the sun and the way it's going to do this is by essentially being the first probe to approach very 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 very, very close to the sun. It's going to be the closest object ever launched and by the time it gets to the sun, it's also going to be the fastest object ever in history of humanity. Now, this means that, well, I really wanted to talk about how we're going to be doing this because launching an object into the sun is a very difficult procedure. It's, it's a lot more difficult than most people realize and there's a very simple reason for it. Now, a lot of people think, or I guess, uh, believe that if you were to shoot a cannon into the sun, you would basically fall into it. There's this common misconception that, you know, if you just basically shoot something into the sun, you fall into it. Now, let's just for fun try this. We're going to just launch something. Let's pick a, I don't know, pick a moon, pick a smaller object. Like, for example, let's, let's go with Pluto. We're going to launch Pluto into the sun right from Earth and see what happens. So here we go, one, two, three, boom. Okay, it actually accidentally went this way, but that's exactly what would happen. So notice how this, there's our Pluto. We shot it into the sun. Now, is it actually flying into the sun? Well, not really. Now, what, where is it going to go? Well, nowhere in particular, it's still going to be orbiting around the sun. Now, why is that? Well, it's because if you shoot anything from Earth into the sun, it's still kind of going to be in that particular orbit. So this is exactly what happened to Pluto here. So how do you actually reach the sun then? Well, it's kind of difficult. So let, let me actually demonstrate it using the, just a random, one of the probes we've used previously. Let's just go with Juno spacecraft. So we're going to place Juno in orbit around Earth. Let's actually decelerate this a little bit. It's going a little bit too fast. Here is Juno in orbit around Earth. This is usually how most spacecraft start. When they are launched from Earth, they get into orbit. This is uh, basically being parked uh, in Earth orbit. This is kind of um, what we usually do at first. And then we need to escape the Earth gravity by reaching the so-called escape velocity. This means that we need to basically accelerate a little bit. And for this particular mission, what we can do is we can go in here and change our relative total velocity from six kilometers per second to something like nine. As soon as we do that, we'll actually be able to escape Earth. Now, let's just do it this way. Ready, and boom. Watch what happens. We escaped Earth, right? But we're actually going in a very different trajectory. We're not going where we should be going. So that didn't work very well. Let's uh, maybe try this again. Let's uh, place another one of these Junos. We have so many to spare tons and tons of Junos to spare. Uh, maybe we'll, we can, maybe, let's choose a Great Pyramid of Giza, that's even better. Here's the Great Pyramid of Giza, and we're going to do the same to it, but this time I'm going to launch it this way, at 9 kilometers per second. And notice how it's going in a different direction, toward um, Venus. And this is exactly what we're going to be doing with this sp spacecraft. We're going to be launching it toward Venus by basically making it uh, achieve its escape velocity in what's known as a Hochman's maneuver. And this maneuver is going to make it approach Venus. And using Venus, we're going to slow this craft down. It basically is going to uh, pass by Venus and lose velocity a little bit at first and then basically achieve an orbit that's going to look something like 
this maybe. So it's going to have this orbit that's going to be a little bit more elliptical actually. And it's going to um, approach Venus not once, not twice, not three times, but seven times. And every time it passes by Venus, every single time it's going to lose a little bit of velocity. It's going to lose a little bit more and a little bit more until one day, one day, it's going to have an orbit that's going to be very eccentric. And I'm going to show it to you right about now. So it's going to have a very eccentric orbit that is going to take it very, very close to the sun. Now, at this point, this is when we're going to start studying the sun. And this is going to be at a distance of about 3.9 million miles from the sun's surface, which is going to be the closest ever uh, approach to the sun in comparison to 93 million miles the distance from sun to earth. So basically, you're going to be something like 300 times closer. This is also a lot closer than the distance of Mercury to the sun. And right at this point, the actual velocity, this is known as the perigee or periapsis, uh, the actual velocity right here is going to be ridiculously fast. At this point, and I don't know why I'm calling this June, I should rename it because it's going to need to confuse some people. This is not a Juno mission at all. This mission is called Palmer mission. This is named after the scientist involved in this mission. It's actually the first NASA mission named after a scientist who's still alive which is kind of cool. So, you know, if you're still alive and you have a mission named after you, it means that you're pretty important. And the speed here is going to be close to 200 kilometers per second. It's going to be ridiculously fast. It's literally going to fly through this area super, super fast. And the temperatures here, as you can imagine, are going to be very, very, very high, which is why this mission is going to be using this very thick uh, four inch shield of carbon, uh, carbon polymer which is going to be protecting it from the solar radiation. And here we go, almost 200 kilometers per second, very close to the sun, a very, very powerful uh, observation and also very powerful amount of radiation coming from the sun. So we don't even have to use very powerful or very strong or very large solar panels. We just have to have a little bit of them because the amount of radiation here is something like 300 to 600 times higher than we get from um, or uh, on our planet Earth. Now, the actual temperatures here will be close to like 2,500 Fahrenheit or 1,377 degrees Celsius, but it will allow us to, uh, to study the sun in a lot of detail. We'll be passing by its uh, corona region and most importantly, we'll be able to finally study uh, how various solar flares occur and this will definitely help us understand the solar radiation, the solar flares, uh, and most importantly, the solar wind as well. And because this is the only star we can study up close right now, this is super important for us. So the actual uh, study of the sun is tremendously important for, you know, understanding things like various ionized gases that come from the sun and stream past our planet Earth and uh, basically cause a lot of problems on you know, in our satellite communication or even in our electronics on the planet. Uh, the solar winds are very, very tremendously powerful, so this will allow us to study them in a lot more detail. And also, we'll get to study the sun weather. The basically, we'll be passing inside of its atmosphere, and space weather can change based on how the sun behaves, and so this is kind of important for us as well. But we'll actually talk more about this mission in some of the future videos. And for now, I just wanted to kind of explain to you how difficult it is to actually reach this particular point. And just to kind of give you an idea of how much we need to decrease the velocity for us to reach the sun. Let's go back to Earth for a second. Let's, let's launch yet another Juno spacecraft right here around Earth. And what we're going to do is, once again, we're going to make an escape watch what we need to do to actually have it reach that region. See how the speed says 33 kilometers per second? So we actually would need to decrease the speed by, let's see how much. I think it's around 20 kilometers per second. So from 33 to approximately seven-ish kilometers per second. So we need to decrease the total speed of this craft by at least 25 kilometers per second for us to reach this region. 
And here it's going to be moving at 200 kilometers per second because as it gets closer and closer to the sun, it accelerates speed. That's essentially how orbital dynamics work. And if you don't really know much about it, there's going to be a video coming really soon explaining this. And there's a video that I made in the past that explained this using the Kerbal Space Program. But anyway, if you have any questions about this mission or the orbital dynamics involved in here, please post them in the comments below so I can make another video explaining all this stuff. For now, that's all I wanted to show you and kind of all I wanted to explain. And hopefully you now know a little bit more about the mission and the reason we're launching this craft. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye.